there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw smoke. And I'm going to show four different uh, methods of uh, illustrating smoke using four different drawing tools. Over here it's going to be pencil. Here we're going to do ink. Uh, this will be watercolor and the final one will be uh, pastel. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to refocus the camera so that we can start drawing some smoke in pencil. Okay, so when I draw smoke uh, using pencil, I hold my pencil at a very low uh, angle to the page to begin with. That way I'm exposing quite a lot of the lead uh, to the surface of the paper. And this allows you to get away from line-based drawing and move more towards um, sort of tone-based drawing. You're not, there, if you get the lead really low down to the paper, you're not going to have any lines uh, show up, which is of course exactly what you want when you're drawing a smoke. And, uh, you know, by the way, this, uh, the illustration of the sort of smoked stack here was also done uh, in pencil. I tried to match each one basically to the uh, medium that I would be using. Um, and basically I'm using kind of a circular technique here, as you might imagine. Um, but uh, my goal in drawing smoke in almost all of these different uh, tex techniques is to get a the darkest area closer to the source uh, and then have it gradually lighten as it goes farther um, away and um, that just is a matter of increasing pressure on the pencil uh, as you get uh, closer to the, in this case the smokestack uh, and sort of letting up the farther up you go and then um, one other thing that I'm trying to do uh, is to have the contour of the smoke be a little tighter and cleaner down here at the base. And I'm actually going to switch to a black colored pencil using my kind of uh, two pencil method, as I call it, um, to make this area the very darkest. Um, because I'm using a black colored pencil that allows me to really go deep dark in here. And um, you'll notice that I am kind of cleaning up the contour uh, in this area compared to the uh, areas farther away, um, which is, you know, just sort of physics, I guess. The smoke is more tightly packed as it's coming out uh, of the chimney and then um, little by little dissipating, and so I'm trying to convey that by way of my uh, pencil work. Now, I think smoke looks more interesting if it's not just a complete um, steady gradient um, shift from dark to light. I like to get some darker patches up here and have it start to become more mottled. Is that the right word? Uh, just add a little bit of variation to uh, the darkness as I go further up. But I'm not going to allow the contours of the uh, smoke up here uh, farther away to be as um, tightly controlled as down here. I want it to be a little more blurry. The nice thing about pencil is it's very easy to go blurry. Even in this case where I'm, I have challenged myself not to um, smear it with my finger. I'm going to be doing that with the pastel uh, later on, but I've sort of decided, nope, we're not going to allow any pencil, finger smearing uh, with this pencil version. And uh, that's about it. I don't think I even need to kick it into time lapse. This gives you the basic idea of uh, how I would draw smoke using um, graphite and black colored pencil. I might go back in here just a little bit right now to push this even deeper and show you that when you go super dark at the source and gradually lighten up, it somehow gives more of a feeling of reality. More depth, I suppose. An appearance of depth to the smoke. Now the next one, which I'm kind of dreading, <laughs> is the pen and ink one. Pen and ink is very challenging uh, for rendering smoke. And uh, what I'm going to have to do is to uh, do a kind of uh, cross-hatching technique. I'm using a number three uh, Micron Pigma here. And uh, you, you will see me sort of laboring to render smoke uh, with lines rather than tone. Um, but if you get a thin enough uh, tip, like this one, the O3, is pretty thin, and they make them considerably thinner than that. Each individual line is so thin 
that you can kind of begin to, um, by way of cross-hatching, get those lines to combine and read as tone. That's the goal, anyway. And this one I probably am going to have to kick it into time-lapse at some point, um, because it just takes a long time to build up, to gradually build up that uh, level of tone. But you can see me sort of varying the direction of the uh, pen strokes, that is a hallmark of um, cross-hatching. Uh, you can have every single line go in the same direction. I don't think you're going to get quite the same um, effect. You'll get a different effect, I should say, rather than be judgmental. <laughs> I, in fact, I think I've, in other videos I've talked about a style that I had in the past of shading with all my lines going in exactly the same direction and it can produce a sort of interesting photographic effect. But certainly with this one I have chosen to go uh, the traditional multi-directional cross-hatching uh, technique. And you can see it just requires uh, patience because certainly I'm not done down here. You know, I'm going to have to come back in here and uh, darken this up, keep building uh, the uh, tone up. But as a challenge, certainly um, rendering smoke with uh, pen and ink is, I would say, more challenging, for me anyway, than uh, rendering it with pencil. But let's go ahead then. I'm going to kick it into time lapse briefly while I finish this off, and then we're going to move on to the next one, which will be uh, in watercolor. Alright, so you can see you get quite a different effect uh, when you try to render smoke uh, with pen and ink. Uh, and I think it'll be interesting to see what people have to say when uh, they compare these various techniques. Some people may even say that they like the pen and ink version uh, best of all. It certainly um, is more of an uh, illustrator's uh, technique where you, you see the individual lines, you see that it's not an attempt to uh, photographically represent um, reality. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is going to be quite different. It's going to be the watercolor approach, but I think I need to refocus the camera. All right, so um, in contrast to these other two techniques, this um, watercolor uh, is not so incremental and not so gradual. You have to really kind of, um, you know, dip your brush into a fairly watery uh, mix of... Um, gray or uh, black watercolor and then just go for it and you can see me um, not being too precious about any individual stroke of the brush here um, my feeling is that uh, you just have to sort of get it down there and then what I do is I dip it back in and try to gradually build while it's still wet before it has uh, dried begin to build up um, closer and closer to the smokestack, to the source, so that it will get gradually get darker and darker. And watercolor differs quite dramatically, you're going to see from these other uh, drawing tools, in the way that it dries and it sort of creates these effects that are a little bit beyond your control. Um, and that the people who love watercolor probably uh, love that aspect of it, that there's a kind of a magic that occurs as it dries. Um, so you can see, and that's why I thought for sure this would be a good medium to include for the um, this smoke um, video, because um, watercolor does interesting stuff when it emul emulates smoke, especially as it dries. Um, and you almost can't take any credit for it as the uh, illustrator. It's sort of the magic of the material. Uh, I'm going to go in and drop in just a bit more to make it even darker right here at the source. And that's basically it. I, th I think you got to know when to stop um, with watercolor. And boy, contrast what the amount of time. I wasn't timing myself, but certainly uh, with this one, um, I must have put in a good five uh, minutes or more building that up, whereas this, what was it, like a minute? <laughs> 
minute and a half maybe. Uh, with watercolor you have to have a lighter touch, you can't really labor over it, but it does, as you can see, create quite an interesting effect. Um, now I'll show you one thing you can do if you're a little dissatisfied with this edge uh, right here. You can uh, clean your brush out and go in with a bit of water uh, and continue to play around with it just a little bit. It still um, is not fused into the page and uh, it's um, malleable, I guess I would say. You, you can still sort of play around with it a bit. A bit. Uh, certainly um, before it fully dries, and even after it fully dries, you might find with a wet brush you can go in and loosen things up a little like you just saw me do right there. So yeah, definitely a good um, material for conveying uh, smoke, uh, although you'll see eventually when we compare um, to the earlier ones. Each one has its own sort of different um, pluses and minuses and it's sort of that's why I thought this would be a fun video to do to, to show how drastically different these materials can be. Well the last one is going to be uh, maybe the most fun and maybe the most truly smoke-like of them all. Uh, allow me to refocus the camera so that I'll have uh, plenty of space and also I want to make sure that this dries uh, before I start using the pastel. So you can see even during that time that it dried, you start to get interesting new effects uh, that happen there. And that happened largely because I added in that water uh, at the end. And uh, certainly, you know, that type of thing cannot really be emulated with any other um, art tool. You really have to get watercolor, you know, to, to achieve that kind of an effect. So I'm going in with pa pastel, not oil pastel, I should stress. This is the dry, kind of chalky uh, pastel. And um, to tell you the truth, if I have to do an illustration that involves smoke, this is kind of my go-to uh, medium uh, because it so readily emulates uh, smoke, especially when you smear it with your fingers, which is what you're going to see me doing soon. But before I do that, I'm going to switch to a, a gray, a paler uh, gray pastel. You can see I've had this one for a while. It's down to like the tiny little <laughs> piece that's left. Um, but I, I'm, I'm trying to remember when I started using pastels. Uh, it probably would have been back in the 90s. Uh, mainly for these kinds of effects. And what I love about it is that you don't, when you're laying it down to begin with, you don't have to worry too much about how beautiful it looks because you're going to be, you know you're going to be smearing it around a lot and playing around, pushing it around a lot with your finger. Uh, and so it, in a way that, that, that those initial strokes of the uh, chalk or pastel on the paper are not uh, so important. It's not weighing on your mind because you know it's all going to get manipulated with your finger uh, afterwards. And as you can see, it just there is a, the more you smear it, the more truly smoke-like uh, it becomes. Um, although with patience, I think you can achieve similar effects with the pencil. Um, but certainly not as quickly as you see me just sort of, this is, this stuff right here, it's all gravy, you know, <laughs> just like, it's just with the dirty surface of my finger, uh, I can push down a little and get a slightly darker, you know, quite subtle uh, changes. None of this possible, uh, certainly with this degree of speed, um, with any of these other drawing uh, tools or medium that I, media <laughs> that I showed you earlier. So I, in a way, I was kind of saving this for last um, because I think it is kind of, for me, the king of smoke. Anytime I want to render smoke in an illustration, if I'm doing mixed media and I have uh, the option of using pastel, not oil pastel, dry sort of chalky pastel, this is my solution nine times out of ten. Just because it, it delivers such a great result and you can get to your good result quite quickly and almost effortlessly it seems to me. I do want to go back in here. This is where I think it becomes a little tricky because pastel, um, when you're trying to manipulate it with your fingers, certainly you have limited uh, control over um, how small the area is. Now they do make these sort of blending 
tools that you can buy or even make yourself um, using something, you know, use a Q-tip or something like that. Um, but I think I'm, I've gotten close enough to the kind of result that I wanted and uh, there you go folks. Let's go ahead and refocus the camera so that we can see uh, all four different styles of smoke side by side and also let's take a break so that I can wash my fingers. <laughs> All right, so there you see all four of the different techniques side by side. Let me know what you thought of this video. I could certainly do more of these, um, you know, showing one type of thing drawn with uh, three or four different uh, art tools so that we can compare the different results. Interesting that the pastel and the um, sort of color pencil graphite um, are fairly similar looking, um, even though they were done with completely different drawing tools. This, of course, <laughs> took a lot longer uh, in terms of the time required, but I think it's time for me to wind down this video uh, by thanking everyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like The Realism Challenge, my book on hyper-realistic illustrations, The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, and my very latest book, The Two Pencil Method. You heard me refer to The Two Pencil Method. That's basically what I was using. Uh, in this illustration right over here. But I think it's time for me to lay down all my various art tools. What was it? A pencil? Can I find the brush? Uh, a black colored pencil? A pastel? It was all in this video, people. <laughs> and I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with another one real soon.